One of the most common applications of differential protection is the protection of a bus. Protection of power system bus bars is one of the most critical relaying applications. When a fault occurs within the bus bar areas of a power system, fault current levels may be very high. In spite of this, some of the circuits connected to the bus may have their current transformers insufficiently rated. This creates a danger of significant CT saturation and jeopardizes security of the bus bar protection system. A false trip of a distribution bus can cause outages to a large number of customers, as numerous feeders, as well as sub-transmission lines, may be disconnected. A false trip of a transmission bus bar may drastically change system topology and jeopardize power system stability. Hence, one of the requirements of bus bar protection is a high degree of security. On the other hand, bus faults generate large fault currents. If not cleared promptly, they endanger the entire substation due to both dynamic forces and thermal effects. As a result, the second requirement of bus protection is that of high-speed operation. With both security and dependability being very important for bus bar protection, the preference is always given to security. Bus protection. Power system bus bars vary significantly in terms of their size, meaning the number of circuits connected, complexity, number of sections, tie breakers, disconnectors, voltage levels, transmission levels, and distribution levels. In the past, these technical aspects combined with economic factors led to a number of solutions for bus bar protection. The most common schemes are high impedance, linear couplers, interlocking, overcurrent or unrestrained differential, percent differential, and finally low impedance microprocessor based. Let's take a look at the operation of each. High impedance. The scheme requires only a simple voltage level sensor. From this perspective, the high impedance protection scheme is not a relay. If breaker failure protective elements, event recording, oscillography, communications, and other benefits of microprocessor based relaying are of interest, then extra equipment is required, such as a digital fault recorder or dedicated breaker failure relays. Linear couplers. A linear coupler, or air core mutual reactor, produces an output voltage proportional to the derivative of the input current. Because they are using air cores, linear couplers do not saturate. During internal faults, the sum of the bus bar currents, and thus their derivatives, is zero. Based on this, a simple bus bar protection scheme is achieved by connecting the secondary windings of the linear couplers in series in order to respond to the sum of the primary currents, and connecting a simple voltage sensor to either end. The disadvantages of this approach are similar to those of the high impedance scheme, in addition to the fact that linear coupler schemes are not as common. The interlocking scheme. A simple protection scheme suitable for distribution bus bars can be accomplished using an interlocking scheme. The interlocking scheme consists of overcurrent relays that are placed on the incoming circuit and at all outgoing feeders. When a fault occurs on this outgoing feeder, the overcurrent relay on the incoming circuit will send a trip signal into the on delay. This delay is present so that the feeder overcurrent relay associated with the fault will have a chance to operate and also send the blocking signal to the incoming circuit overcurrent relay, therefore blocking its operation. This prevents the rest of the system from being unnecessarily shut down. When using microprocessor-based multifunctional relays, it becomes possible to integrate all the required OC functions in one or very few relays, thus not only reducing wiring and coordination time, but also speeding up the operation of the scheme. Modern microprocessor relays, which have a fast peer-to-peer -peer communication service, such as the UCA Goose messaging mechanism, can be used to send the blocking signal, eliminating the relay-to-relay -relay hardwiring required for the block signal. The scheme, although easy to apply and economical, is limited to specific simple bus bar configurations. Overcurrent differential. Typically, a differential current is created externally to a current sensor by summation of all the circuit currents. Preferably, the CT should be of the same ratio. If they are not, a matching CT or several CTs is needed. This, in turn, may increase the burden for the main CTs and make the saturation problem even more serious. Historically, means to deal with the CT saturation problem include definite time or inverse time overcurrent characteristics. Although economical and applicable to distribution bus bars, this solution does not match performance of more advanced schemes and should not be applied to transmission level bus bars. 
The principle, however, is used as a protection function in an integrated microprocessor-based busbar relay. If this is the case, such unrestrained differential elements should be set above the maximum spurious differential current and may give a chance to speed up operation on heavy internal faults as compared to a percent or restrained bus differential element. Percent differential. Percent differential relays create a restraining signal in addition to the differential signal and apply the percent or restrained characteristic discussed earlier. The difference ID is the resultant of the vector sum of all currents feeding the bus while the choices of the restraining signal include sum, average, and maximum of the bus currents. Typically, manufacturers will choose either the single or dual slope characteristic. This low impedance approach does not require dedicated CTs, can tolerate substantial CT saturation, and provides high speed tripping. This principle became really attractive with the advent of microprocessor based relays because of the following. Advanced algorithms supplement the percent differential protection function, making the relay very secure. The relay can perform CT ratio compensation, eliminating the need for matching CTs. Protection of a bus that can dynamically change its configuration can be accomplished without switching secondary current circuits. Integrated break or fail function can provide optimal tripping strategy, depending on the actual configuration of a bus bar. And distributed architectures are proposed that place data acquisition units in bays and replace current wires by fiber optic communications.